I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been Welcome back to Bible Talks. I'm Chris Kramer with the Northside Church of Christ in Russellville, Kentucky. We invite you to worship with us each Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. Our building is located at 689 North Main Street in Russellville. And if you're familiar with Russellville, as I always say, we are right next door to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Can't miss it. Come, bring your Bibles. Let's study God's Word together. We have classes for all ages. So bring your families and we'd love to meet you and talk uh, about godly things. If you have questions or comments about this lesson or any uh, aspect of religion from God's word, uh, we will provide a Bible answer. So please reach out to us and we'd be happy to study with you, uh, our homes, your homes, the church building, city park, wherever it might be, so that we can discuss matters of God's word together and uh, give fellowship and praise to his name upon our obedience to God. So we're thankful that you tuned in to Bible Talks today. If you will, uh, go back and review this program as well as many others on our on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, this program not only airs each Saturday morning on WRUS here in Russellville, uh, which you can also find on their website, but you can go to Northside Church of Christ, Russellville, Kentucky. Find our website. It's all over the place. Just click on the links that are there. You'll be taken to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and right now, this uh, lesson is being uh, broadcast in a video format as well. So um, you're welcome to comment and on that uh, on those programs, and uh, we'll talk about godly things. While you turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 12, uh, we want to welcome once again with us Nick Greenman. Good morning, Nick. Good to see you. Good morning, Chris. It's good to be with you, and uh, good to be back with you this week. And for those who are getting ready for our study today, go ahead and open, open up your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 12. We'll be getting there in just a moment. So while you're turning there, just let me in, invite anybody who is in the Butler County area to services tomorrow at Christian Home Church of Christ. We meet at 10 o'clock for Bible class, and then we will transition to an hour of worship at 11, and then we'll convene back together again that evening at 5 o'clock for an hour of worship then as well. Midweek Bible study is Wednesdays at 7 and so we are we're making our way through the book of Philippians, focused on the idea of joy. And so we're it's a it's a blend both between a topical and a textual study. I'm really enjoying it. I'm sure you will too. So come on out. Bible studies on Sunday mornings and Wednesdays. We're covering that that workbook. Yeah, thinking about Philippians, I just finished up a series uh, over the past few months, really, on Philippians through a program I also call Truth and Reason. Uh, that airs on Sunday nights, and you can find that on YouTube. There's also a Facebook page for that. I uh, usually try to drop it around 5 o'clock and just finish Philippians. So I'm thinking about going on to a study in the Gospels and uh, whether I want to do them to, you know, maybe a harmony of the Gospels or maybe just cover a book at a time. Definitely want to talk about the life of Jesus uh, for the next couple of months. And so uh, just tune into that. And uh, but uh, yeah, enjoy uh, join uh, Nick over at Christian Home uh, in Morgantown uh, if you're in that area. Well, we began discussing a couple of weeks ago, Proverbs 11, and we meant to lead into 12. And uh, of course, last week we couldn't really get together for technical difficulties, but uh we're going to cover Proverbs chapter 12 today and uh, just kind of do a quick, you know, hit with each verse. We want to cover the entirety of the chapter so we can get on uh, through our study of Proverbs rather hurriedly. We intended to be done by the end of the year, but that may or may not happen. <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> but it's a great book. We don't want to overlook anything. But one of the things that I kind of gleaned from Proverbs 12 is I, reading through these, I, I was just thinking, wow. You know, election time's coming up, and Nick, I know that you've been involved in the voting process and working the polls, things like that. Um, and and I see a lot of advice here, advice mm -hmm. for. And if you remember our last studies in Proverbs eleven, we talked about daily living, how in these chapters you find God's intention for man to live in a godly way. And though there's a no, whole, there's not a whole lot you might say what we'll call doctrinally. And though mm -hmm. I think everything in the Bible is doctrine, um, you don't find 
you know, about Sunday morning worship, as you had mentioned a couple of weeks ago, you don't find, you know, these steps of obedience and baptism into Jesus and things like that in the book of, of Proverbs, but you find the wisdom and the daily life, the character that we need to have in order to properly process the wisdom of God mm -hmm. and everything, the basis of everything is God, of course. So when I was thinking about election advice, I'm thinking, you know what? Every politician needs to read these things. Every politician needs to read Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs 31 specifically mentions politics in regard to a, a mother teaching a mm -hmm. king of a nation. Um, and I thought how well and how fitting it fits into justice and reputation. Mm -hmm. Things that every one of us should consider as Christians as well. What are some of your thoughts before we get into our reading? Just along those lines, uh, you mentioned Proverbs 31, and uh, King Lemuel's mother does go into some fantastic advice on how a king should keep his mind sober so he can be just and, and righteous in his decision making. And we we do live as, a, as kings. I, I, if we are in Christ, we are to have that same mentality that we need to have a sober mind not clouded and cluttered, but focused on, on God's truth and wisdom, putting it into action. And we go to Proverbs to see wisdom to be able to put into action. And we were talking now on ARE this week. Uh, if anyone's ever listening to us on Answering Religious Error, I mentioned uh, that uh, proverb, uh, was it Proverbs 22, 17, or, or something of that nature, where it talks about merriment, right? You know, merriment is good for the soul. And, and we were talking about Jesus. And I said, well, Jesus is the embodiment of wisdom. So I'm sure he was joyful. <laughs> you know, he, he had... He had those moments of merriment, and and that's good. It's it's healthy. We, we should have those things. And so, if we want to be Christ like, you know, then we need to put wisdom into action. And where better to go to see these little quick pithy statements than Proverbs itself? And so, uh, we need to make sure that we keep our minds uh, sober, our eyes vigilant. And the best way that we can begin to see some of that stuff is here in Proverbs to know exactly how we should live and think and and work our way through things and sometimes it takes us a little bit uh it takes a little bit of meditation to figure out how to put something into practice uh, but you know we we get into it we have to know what the proverb says in order to begin to that that process and so how about we get started today chris and get reading into chapter 12 well we live in a world where sometimes the difference between good and bad is a blurred line uh, but here we definitely see a line drawn in the sand. This is the this is the separation of the good versus the bad, the evil versus the righteous. Mm -hmm. um, and what you also find is that you need to make a choice. And, and this is the choice of every Christian. Uh, let's just begin in verse one. We did a couple of weeks ago, but whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. And that's a terminology a lot of people don't want to hear these days, but uh, we ha we make the choice. We make the choice as to whether we want to be ignorant of what is right and what is true, or whether we want to apply it to our lives, to the wisdom and the understanding of God's word. And then it leads into verse two that teaches us the character that's built from that. I'll go ahead and read that. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions, he will condemn. And, you know, and I think about that term favor a lot when I think about Jesus, when it's described that he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God mm -hmm. and men, uh, that his reputation, you know, was known not only in the spiritual realm as God's son, but among men. Uh, no one could deny, you know, his goodness, his understanding, his wisdom, whether they wanted to deny that he was the son of God or not. People today will even say, you know, people that don't believe that he's the son of God, because there are people out there that believe don't believe that but they'll still say well he he was a good man we can't deny mm -hmm. that well, you know good men don't lie about who they are you know uh but uh but that's not the point of the lesson here the lesson is that a good man obtains favor from the lord and what jesus did is he obeyed god in everything he obeyed them even to the point of of baptism so uh nick take us into some of the further verses and let's tie all these things together yeah, verse 3 says, A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. And, you know, it's, it's amazing how many times people try to justify an action, uh, 
you know, the end justifying the means kind of thing. And they, they think, well, sometimes it's okay to do a little wickedness to, to establish something positive. Well, that's not true at all. That's You're just fooling yourself. Uh, be righteous, have integrity of character. And, and then, of course, the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Verse four is a really powerful verse in regards to uh, the perception that we should have for our wife, uh, whereas oftentimes our wives are the butt end of our jokes and it's unfortunate. We should have a little bit more uh, care in how we talk and treat our spouses. But it says an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. Verse 5, it says, the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked are, lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. And and again, it's just, you know, that mindset, uh, lying in wait for blood, that's a, uh, there's a lot of dangers when it comes to the idea of uh you know, who do you associate with? And it's going to get you in a lot of trouble. And, and so 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, uh, be not deceived, but evil company corrupts good morals. And, and so be very careful about who it is that you hang out with. You know, we all hear the news and, you know, you hear about somebody's life being taken by somebody else. And more often than not, uh, that's going to be in some kind of domestic circumstance where, Oh, you'll see something, uh, you know, a party at someone's home, uh, you know, two rival gangs kind of thing, uh, a bar, obviously, dance halls, things like this. These are things, these, you know, late at night, hanging out, doing things of which you ought not when you should be going to bed kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things that creates an atmosphere of, you know, of lying in wait. Um you know, people easily get, um, well, especially when drugs are involved or alcohol, things that inebriate the mind, they muddle the mind, they mess up a person's thinking. And the next thing you know is they want revenge, you know, for everyone that's wronged them. Uh, we've seen way too much violence going on in the world today. But you, you take a righteous person, he doesn't think that way. God teaches us in his word how to correct a problem. And going back to the previous verses that you read, you know, we need to be lifting one another up as a husband should lift up, you know, her. I mean, that, what, what do you do with a crown? You have to lift it up above mm. your head. Uh, and that, that may be a stretch of an analogy, but, you know, that's the way we need to treat our wives. Um, you know, it, it, you know, when you look at a man not established by wickedness, what we're talking about is the reputation of people and what you do, one act that you do may stick with you the rest of your life. E even if you repent, even if you make things right, there are always going to be people in life that remember that one thing that you did. Mm. And sometimes it's very hard to live down a foolish reputation, maybe that you established in your youth, uh, whatever it may have been, it may have not even been on purpose, but that's why we should be extra careful in everything that we, in that we do, that our reputation is like a, a light that shines in, in the darkness. Going on in verse seven kind of shows a conclusion to some of those things. The wicked are overthrown and no more are no more. You know, this is somewhat, and I think I made mention of this in one of our programs recently is that a lot of the Proverbs kind of end like this in regard to the, the end of the wicked and what becomes of them. One thing I like about chapter 12, it actually ends on a positive note. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, verse 28, you know, the way of righteousness is life in its pathway. There is no death. So we will have a wonderful existence. Now, this doesn't mean uh, that the wicked cease to exist. And w one thing, wickedness will cease to exist, but those that have committed wickedness will have eternal condemnation. So we're looking at all the way to the end of, of judgment itself and uh, where our eternal souls will end up because we will all face an end. But what will it be, be the beginning of? And for Christians living their lives righteous in the sight of God, um, you know, it's going to be the beginning of wonderful things and of the place that I think we all want to be. And it says in verse seven, the house of the righteous will stand. And that's not just in the end, but that's in life too. Mm -hmm. That's in the blessings of life as well. And then you've still have the reputation 
you know, um, that we have here on the earth. We should have verse eight, a man will be commended according to his wisdom, but he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. What I think is interesting about this verse is that's true. Even among the evil, you know, those that are not righteous, they still want to be treated with fairness. They still want to be treated right. They don't want people lying to them. They don't want people fighting with them. They still want all the good things in this life. Isn't it ironic, mm-hmm. though, that they wouldn't choose the righteousness of God in order to obtain it? What are some of your thoughts, Nick? Well, I was talking to a friend today about how there are these conundrums or these situations that come up regarding you know, the integrity of personal character. And, you know, for example, like sometimes an elderly couple might choose not to get married, but they'll continue to live together because they get more money with Social Security or whatnot like that. Uh, that's uh, th- that's a strategy that is implemented uh, very commonly, uh, whether we're talking about young people with wel- welfare or elderly couples with uh, with Social Security. It, it doesn't matter. There's this there's at the end of the day, we have to do things the right way. And and we got to trust in God. You know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And are you uh, too concerned about paying your bills that you're not going to obey God or you need to consider your 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 life? And, and so it's interesting when people do find out that you are bending the rules or breaking the rules, even though you are trying to uh, get around something. Uh, oftentimes that will destroy a reputation. And and so we're whether we're talking about an organization that begins to break the rules and start doing things under the table, it's going to damage reputations. If you're claiming to be a Christian and then you're trying to tell somebody to, hey, you need to step up and do things the right way when they'll turn around and say, well, aren't you doing this? Aren't you doing that? Where's your counsel? It's all shattered. It's no good. So learn how to be faithful now <laughs> and then when you do give counsel later it won't be despised it won't be discredited but that you will be someone that is uh worth listening to because they have seen the integrity of your heart from the very beginning yeah we want somebody that's uh you know proven themselves to be you might say successful in life i was talking to somebody the other day going back to election things it's like you know who are we going to vote for for this office or that office and you know, a lot of people, well, we want a man that's like us, a man of the people, a man that's been where we are. And I'm thinking, you know, I need something. I need somebody a little smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> I need somebody that kind of knows what they're doing. And, uh, you know, we need to, you know, consider the fact that one, we don't know everything and, and what we think needs to be done in our world, whether it's fixing a pothole on the road or, or uh, you know, building a fence somewhere or cutting down a tree or planting a tree, whatever it might be. Um, you know, are, do we have the wisdom to make those decisions for our communities, for the world? Uh, we need to apply ourselves to being part of the, what we call it, you know, solution, not part of the problem. We want to give back. We want to be productive in society so that we can make this world a, a better place. Um, you know, just little things. I always try to just, you know, if I'm out and about, I'm in a store, I see something fall off a shelf, I'm going to pick that up and put it back. You know, I'm not going to sit around waiting for an employee to come by to quote unquote, do their job. You know, I think a lot of the integrity comes down to just kindness. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you have a love for your fellow man, what are you going to do for them? Are you going to be merciful to them? Are you going to be a help helpful to them? Uh, or is it just a matter of, uh, you know, everybody needs to do their part and just leave me alone. It's, it's kind of how it you know comes out to be. We all have responsibilities. I'm not denying those things. A man must work in order to provide for his home, for his family, for his friends, and so on. But going on with some of the reading here, uh, verse 8, a man will be commended according to his wisdom, but he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. And I think I read that, but um, as I said, even the world understands this particular concept. Mm-hmm. And they want to see godliness in people, whether they agree with your doctrines or not. Uh, Verse nine, better is the one who is slighted, but has a servant than he who honors himself, but, but lacks bread. You know, we need to focus on what we're blessed with, uh, not what we don't have and not thinking that it's all about us and all about what I need. Uh, I had two people cut me off in traffic today. So, you know, the first thought is my, in my mind is, 
well, why did they do that to me? And then I realized they didn't do it to me. They just made a mistake. You know, lady pulls out in traffic, wasn't watching where she was going. She had nothing against me in the world. So I don't need to get bent out of shape by it, you know, mm-hmm. and the things like that will happen because as, uh, oh, is it Ecclesiastes that says, uh, you know, that we shouldn't take to heart things that people say because we also have maybe cursed someone else. And um, no matter what somebody has done to you, you've probably done to somebody as well at some point in life. But b- back to verse nine, I may have made a little more of that verse than what's there, but how many times have we felt slighted or, um, and I think there might be some other ways to look at this verse as well. What are some of your thoughts? Well, you know, humility is a is a problem. I mean, and as we get through the book of Proverbs, pride is going to be something that's going to be brought out time and time again. We shouldn't, uh, we should be humble enough um, and just begin to process what's important, what's not important. Like you said, the lady cut you off. You were able to process it. I mean, you know, it's not that big of a deal. She just made a mistake. You can go on with your life. I mean, you're, you're at peace. You're not stressed out. But if you were trying to honor yourself and try to run up beside her and yell at her and all that, I mean, you would have made a fool of yourself <laughs> trying yeah. to honor yourself. Like, and create you know, more anger for everyone. Yeah, and, or more hazards on the road, all of that. And it could have caused a lot more problems. It could have escalated even worse. Yeah. But keeping a level head, you know, keeping your pride in check, you know, that saves saves a lot of problems down the road. And so, yeah, because, everyone you know, to- the, uh, one thing that keeps coming up, happens a lot in my social media feeds is that uh, this particular meme, and I wish I could remember exactly how it's worded, but a bad day doesn't mean that you're having a bad life, mm-hmm. you know, something to that effect. And I thought, well, that's a, that's a good way of putting it because yeah, you know, we're going to have bad things happen, you know, but that doesn't mean that that's what our life is about. You know, better is one who is slighted, but has a servant. Uh, you're going to have bad moments happen. You're, you're going to have moments that happen uh, but yet you still got all this to be thankful for. And and this is something that we need to consider, especially as Christians, that we have God in our lives. We have a son, Jesus Christ. Our goal in life is not that everything in this physical life is going to be perfect. It's about getting to heaven. And that's where we need to put our focus and efforts on. That's why we're doing these Bible studies, so that we can be a people who apply godly wisdom to our lives so that we can grow closer uh, to God. And, and you know, verse 9 uh, talks about, you know, those that honor themselves, but what do they lack? What, what do they, what's the price they pay for maybe attention, maybe uh, mm-hmm. to look at themselves with great pride? There are people that will uh, be so prideful about who they are, about what they, um, what they do in life, uh, but at the end of the day, have nothing to show for it. You know, it's like, it's, it's danger in the social media world. You know, how many people are watching our program? How many people are liking it? Thumbs up and how many people are following me and all this kind of thing. And, um, you know, it's just that kind of mentality. It comes and goes with the tide. And, uh, how long can you live your life constantly seeking the attention and the validation of everyone around you? Because I can tell you this, it's easier for people not to care about you than to try to make them care about you. <laughs> mm-hmm. And if you spend your time worrying about that, at the end of the day, you're not going to have the bread that you need in a figurative sense. You're not going to have what you need to just make it through life because you worry too much about the uh, less important things. Are we laying our treasure in heaven? And you know, Nick, I know I said at the beginning of the program, it'd it'd be nice to get through the entire chapter. That's that's not going to (laughs) happen. I don't think so, Chris. Maybe we can cover a couple of other verses uh, real quick here before we wrap up our program for today. But uh, uh, any last thoughts before we? Well, if if we want to look at a couple of verses, uh, verse uh, verse 10 is a really interesting verse. It says, a righteous man regards the life of his animal but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. You know, you can tell a lot about a person, the way they treat their animals. Right. And, and of course, some take it way too far. You know, they, they make 
their animals more valuable than humans. That's that's certainly a pendulum swing in the wrong direction there. But uh, you know, just just kindness. You could just see the the genuine nature of somebody's kindness uh, if they're going to be kind to to God's creation. Uh, but you know, maybe on a more modern day application, I, I was wondering if. The way that we handle ourselves in video games, you know, there's probably some people who listen to us who play video games, and and I know people allow themselves to become uh, unbridled, and they make they make a lot of uh, worldly, ungodly decisions in video games, and then they pass it off saying, "Well, it's just a video game; it's not real life." And there's a lot of truth to that, but at the same time, you had to make that personal decision to do that. Yeah. And so the way that you conduct yourself in the video game, maybe maybe that needs to be put in check too, because it highlights what's in your heart that you're allowing to be expressed because there's no consequences, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. uh, but but there is. There is a very serious consequence in your heart that's being that's being done. So you know, when I when I read that, I I was starting to think, I mean, that's important. Uh, that's an important uh, concept to really meditate on, especially as a modern day application. I think you see it too in a lot of violence uh, that's out there. You know, people tend to live vicariously through you know, video games and things that mm -hmm. they do. Um, yeah, like you said, we may have some listeners that are, you know, I mean, that's part of the modern day thing. I don't, I don't play games. Um, I was never good at them. So that's one reason <laughs> I never really got into it, but you know, uh, you know, you've always played those shooter games or things like that. And uh especially when it's, you know, taking the life of someone else. Uh, um, you know, one of the things they do in movies is they'll take the life of a human being just like that. But at the end of the show, they'll always tell you no animals were harmed mm. in the making of this film. You know, that's because there's just a sense of uh, sensitivity that people have uh, toward, and I'm just going to use the term lower life form in a case like this, just to put an emphasis on the fact that, if you can't have respect toward the lower life forms uh, of this life, animals and things that, uh, you know, have a, have a life cycle, you know, can certainly take care of themselves to an extent. But if you don't have a consideration for them, then how in the world can you turn around and, and, and treat man the way that you do? Uh, you know, some people love their pets more than they love people. Uh, that's that needs to change. You know, I'm not saying love your pets less or whatever. I'm mm. just saying let's have an equal attitude of love from your heart, from who you are as a person, uh, not just weighing somebody's worth. And, you know, people have souls. People need to be taught the gospel and need to have a hope of a home in heaven with God someday. And that's our goal. That's our duty. Um, and the way that we treat the lower life forms in this life, except spiders, right? That's not included. Am I right about that? <laughs> Little joke yeah, there, but you know, no, just... <laughs> if they're outside, I'll let them be inside. It's kind of a different story. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll well, save that for another snakes. program. I don't want to be hypocritical here, but <laughs> let's read the end of verse 10. The tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. I mean, mm. what... What a, what a, I mean, is that, is that twisted? The tender mercies of the wicked? You can't even count on that. Yeah. You know, how do we trust in one another? How can you even trust in the wicked when they are, when they're smiling at you, when they're doing things? And I've met people in life that would do anything for you, but it would cost you. I've met people in life that would, we'll just say, give you the shirt off their back. But boy, it, it would cost you in return. And uh, there was just a sense of cruelty in, in the smile of a wicked man. And maybe that's where he's going with this. But that's about all we have time for in our program today. Uh, I was hoping we could end on the positive note. But what we do uh, in, in our understanding of teaching is to bettering our character in our daily life, looking forward to what we want to be and making the choice between good and evil. Living for God is always good. And so when you're out there, you know, voting, when you're out there applying yourself to a, a job in life, when you're doing something for somebody, give it your all, give it your best, do it out of love and out of care and uh, not so much out of obligation. We'll pick up with verse 11 next week and try to get through the rest of the chapter as we look through these tidbits of information of, uh, of this daily life. 
and of justice, of reputation, and how we can build on that uh, as Christians and as citizens. Any last thoughts, Nick? We'll just shut it there. Okay. Look forward to seeing you next time. I want to thank everybody for joining us today on Bible Talks. Uh, continuing your studies of Proverbs chapter 12. We'll get to these things eventually, but we hope that you glean a little bit of something through our discussions of these verses so that we can apply these things to our lives and uh, be thankful to God. Thanks for joining us today. We hope to see you next time on Bible Talks. Since I have been redeemed, spirit, I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in his name. Since I have been redeemed, spirit, I have been redeemed. I will glory in my Savior's name.